At the beginning of Parshas Vayishlach, uh, Yaakov Avinu is about to have this encounter once again after many long years away, 20 years plus, that he's been away from Esav, his brother. Esav originally had, we know from the scripture, that Esav had planned to kill his brother Yaakov for taking away his blessings using stealth, using guile, using trickery to take away his blessings. And he said, I'm going to, after my parents die, I'm going to kill my brother Yaakov. And Yaakov seems to be aware of this, which is why he runs away at the instruction of his, of his mother. And now after all of these long years that he's away, he's ready to come back to Eretz Yisrael. And why specifically now? Well, the Torah tells us that it was specifically now because Yosef had been born. And there's a medrash that says this, that when Yaakov sends a message to Esav, he says, Im Lavan garti vo'echar ad ata. I lived with Lavan for all of these years, and I have tarried until now. I've delayed my coming back until now. So the medrash asks, what was special about now? So if we look at last week's Parsha, we notice it was the birth of Yosef. Why the birth of Yosef? So um, the Medrash tells us, the Amar Rabbi Pinchas b'shem Rabbi Shmuel bar Nachman, this is in source number two, Masoret hu she'en Esav nofel ela biyad baneha shel Rachel. We have a tradition that the descendants of Esav will only be felled through the descendants of Rachel. In other words, out of all of the tribes of Israel who will have the power to defeat Esav, it will only be the descendants of Rachel who have the power to defeat Esav. And so it was necessary for Yaakov to wait until Rachel had a child before he knew that it was safe, on, at least metaphysically. You know, Yosef is still just the boy. Um, but until it was safe metaphysically to confront Esav once again. So I just want to spend a little bit of time trying to understand why or what is the quality of Rachel's children that enables us to defeat Esav. There, there are many different ways of looking at this. I want to provide you an insight based on Hasidus. We're going to take a look at a little bit at the Shem Mishmuel and then a little bit at the Svas Emes, two early 20th century Hasidic masters. So the Shem Mishmuel in source number three says as follows. He says, Quoting the Medrash, So he first starts by quoting this Medrash that we just read, that Yaakov needed to wait until Yosef was born, because now that a descendant of Rachel was born, he could confront Esav. I'd like to explain it as follows. Now, what do we know about the wrestling match that takes place in our Parsha? The angel, who according to our tradition, at least according to many of our traditions, many of the uh, texts in our tradition, is the representative, is the incarnation of the spiritual essence of Esav, that person who wrestles with Yaakov all night. It says that towards the end of the bout, the angel touches Yaakov's thigh and disables him, causes him severe injury, which caused Yaakov to limp on his thigh. Vi'ita bisfarim shepagam b'midat netzach. The Sfarim write, and he's actually quoting the Zohar here, you know, Sandy, talk about esoteric information. What exactly was Esav injuring within Yaakov, within the Jewish people? What he was injuring is something that in Kabbalah is called the trait of Netzach. What does the word Netzach mean? Can anyone tell me what it means? Eternity. 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 Now, what does eternity mean? What does that mean? What, what, does that, what does that tell you? There's a quality within the Jewish people called Netzach. By the way, Linatzeach means to be victorious. Nitzachon is a victory. What does Netzach, eternity, have to do with Nitzachon, victory? We're going to explain that momentarily. So if we want to be able to understand this very mysterious idea, he quotes from his father, the Avnei Nezer, Rav Avraham of Sachachav, Rav Avram Borstein of Sachachav, and he writes as follows, Al pi ma'amar ha-magid ha-kadosh mikoznitz, 
using the, uh, a deep statement from an earlier Hasidic rabbi from the 18th century, Rabbi Yisrael Hopstein, the, the, the Koshnitzer Magid, right, one of the early Hasidic masters. It says as follows, Mi ale vahar Hashem v'yoter abuta mi akum bimkom kodsho. There's a Pasuk in Tehillim that says, who can go up to the mountain of God and who can endure in his holy place? Now those are two statements. Why do you need two statements? Because it's one thing to go up the mountain. It's another to stay on top of the mountain. And that's what Netzach represents. Netzach means that anyone can have a temporary high. You get a spike in holiness, right? You really feel supercharged and energized and inspired. But how do you maintain staying on top of the mountain? It's much harder to remain for any extended period on that high than it is to feel that temporary high. So that's why King David said, Mi ha Hashem, u mi akum bim kam It's hard enough to get up to that mountain, but to stay on that mountain, boy, is that difficult. To stay there for any extended time, that's quite difficult. He says, that's what netzach means. Eternality means to remain on that high level consistently and persistently. That's what netzach means. It's a power that the Jewish people have to be consistently holy. Not just at times holy, but consistently holy. And that's a very, very difficult madrega. It's a very difficult level to achieve in life of consistency and persistence. I call it really persistence more than consistency because consistency isn't all it's, 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 um, it's made out to be. A lot of times you have to be somewhat inconsistent in order to be persistent because the only way to change in a positive direction is to some, sometimes be inconsistent. But you have to be persistent in making sure that you never let down your guard. And that's what netzach means. The reason why it's related to the word victory, nitzachon, is because the only way that you can ever win in any battle in life is through persistence. You have to be nitzchi in order to be minatzeach. Okay, if, if, you, if you enjoy those play, play on words in Hebrew. Okay. So first of all, let's clarify. It says the says the Rabbi Shemi Shmuel Shmuel of Shmuel Borstein of Sachachov. He says, I want to be very clear. Yaakov was never inconsistent, or never Yaakov never had a bad day in his life. He was always on a very very high spiritual level. However, Ela bidorot habaim he til pigam ki maod kasheli he shaer bidevekut. But what was represented in the touching of his loins and injuring him in his hip or his thigh is the fact that in future descendants that would issue from his loins, there was going to be that problem that Asa would be able to attack the lack of persistence and consistency within the descendants of the Jewish people, meaning you and me. One of the biggest challenges that we have to face when we battle our Yetzir Hara is the battle of persistence because things get stale, and things get old, and things get tired, and we're just not into it as much as we were yesterday, and we have to always try and recapture that moment of inspiration, and it's not easy. That netzach quality that Yaakov was able to attain is not as easily attained by his descendants, and that's represented in the story of the angel injuring Yaakov in his thigh. And my father, he says, used this medrash to bring home this point that netzach is very difficult to maintain. And he's quoting a medrash which talks about Yaakov lifting off the, the rock to get the water for the shepherds, you know, from last week's parsha. And then after you draw the water, you put the rock back on the well to preserve the water. And that's the difficult part, is putting the rock back on the well to preserve the water. It's very easy to remove the rock, to draw the water, and to get that inspiration. 
but now you got to put it back and close the jar and store it up and keep it. And that's not easy. But what does that show us? That if Esav has any ascendancy or advantage over the Jewish people, it's because he is persistent. But his persistence is to the negative. He's persistently negative or persistently evil. Because if, if Esav didn't have the quality of persistence, he wouldn't be able to injure the Jewish people with their lack of persistence. Okay? And therefore, Amos, the prophet, says about Esav that their quality of wrath has the quality of Netzach. They're persistently, methodically able to stay in one direction for extended periods of time. That's the quality of Esav. The Alkain, Afshi Yaakov Bihishtach Avoto Sheva Pamim Ad Gishto Arachiv, he freed me menu Zayin Kochota Tuma. And therefore, even though Yaakov, when he bowed down to Esav at the beginning of our Parsha seven times, is sort of demonstrating this idea that I'm weakening you, Esav, I'm trying to in some way dilute your impurity. But nonetheless, I'm just skipping a couple of lines. Kitiv vayoshav esav bayomahu ledarko seira shechazar takef lusuro. But after their encounter, Esav returned back to his place completely the same person that he was before. In other words, Yaakov was not able to make a dent in Esav because Esav's greatest strength is his consistency and his persistence and his endurance. And that's what we have to remember is that in life, the enemy of the Jewish people will be able to defeat us only because they are more persistent and, and in, it, it had more endurance than we do. I mean, we see this in the world today. We see that the reason why the BDS is, is gaining strength, is that what you wanted to talk you about? say the Muslims. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't say the Muslims. I, I, I don't like that because that's sort of a little bit on the racist side. But I would say those who are anti-Semitic and are BDS supporters yes. are able to gain ascendancy when we sort of let our guard down and they never let their guard down. In other words, they're relentless. They're persistent. They're consistently trying to be aggressive against the Jewish people. And that's, and that's why, and I'm just skipping down to the last section, he says, that's the connection to Yosef. Yosef midat netzach de kedusha. He says, when Yosef was born, the quality of netzach of holiness increased. And the one thing we know about Yosef, and we're going to be reading about him in ensuing weeks, is his consistency that no matter where you put Yosef, you can put him in the most impure of places, he has the uncanny ability to retain his connection to the divine. Make him the viceroy of Egypt, put him in the Potiphar's house where he is constantly being seduced and tested and tormented, put him in jail, put him wherever you want, he will always maintain that connection with Hashem no matter what. It is that endurance and that persistence of Yosef that demonstrates that we can ultimately defeat the Esav, who is equally persistent in the other direction. And that's the reason why Yaakov had to wait until Yosef was born, because Yosef represents the persistence of the Jew despite all of the external pressures that are placed upon us to, to just fade away. So that's the story of Yaakov and Esau. That's why Yaakov had to wait until Esau was born. Now, I just want to complement this idea with um, something that the Sfas Emes says on a Dvar Torah for Hanukkah. Believe it or not, it's going to be Hanukkah. How many weeks till Hanukkah? Two weeks? Two weeks till Hanukkah? OK, get in all of that shopping. Um, there is a statement by the Gemara. <coughs> The Gemara says, Mezuzah biyamin v'ner Chanukah bismol. There was a tradition in the times of the Talmud that is done still in Israel today, that instead of putting your menorah in the window, you put your menorah in the doorway. And the, the Talmud says that the way you're supposed to position your menorah 
is you're supposed to have the mezuzah on the right side of the door as you walk in, and you're supposed to have the, the menorah on the left side, so that when you walk through the door of your house, you're surrounded by mitzvot. You're surrounded by the mezuzah on the right side and the menorah on the left side. People still do this today. If you know in Israel, people will put the mezuzah in their doorway in a glass case to protect it from the wind, and it's a beautiful thing to see. Okay, and that's really the traditional way to do it. The only reason why we don't do that today <coughs> is because living in the diaspora where it's not, hasn't, was, wasn't always safe for Jews, we put it in the window. There were times when we didn't even put it in the window. We put it on our dining room table and closed the shades because it was dangerous to light the menorah. But as you see, now in Eretz Yisrael today, people are putting it in their doorways like the original mitzvah. Okay? But what's the significance? Besides being surrounded by mitzvot, the Spasemis says there's a deeper reason to this as well. He says, Ki ha amdu Torah tech. He says, what was the whole objective of the Greeks? It was to cause us to forget our Torah. The function of the mezuzah, when you walk through the door, right, you're supposed to, you, you remember every time you see that mezuzah, I remember uz, kol mitzvot Hashem. you're supposed to remember all of the commandments. That's the function of the mezuzah, to remind you as you walk into your house, oh, I have, a, I have to live my life as a Torah Jew. The ner l'ragli divarecha, and as it says, um, that King David writes, he says, your words are a light to illuminate my steps. Wherever I go in life, if I remember that I have your Torah, they illuminate my, my, the footsteps that I take in this life. The word regel also appears in the context of the laws of Hanukkah. The Talmud says that how long do you have to light the menorah from sunset until people stop walking with their feet in the marketplace. Which means, literally it means, people have to be present in, in the public sphere in order for you to be able to fulfill the mitzvah of menorah because ha there has to be the ability for people to see your menorah. So if you light the menorah at three in the morning, you can't really be yod say the mitzvah because no one's there to see it. And the way that the Talmud says it, as ad shetichle regel min hashuk, until the foot leaves the market. So why does, it, why does the Talmud use that strange terminology? He says, He says, the function of the menorah is to shake us free from what's called hergel, the word from the word regel. The word regel means a foot, but hergel, which is from the same root, means habituation, to get into the habit of doing something. And the menorah is supposed to shake us from habituation, from just going through the motions because we just do it over and over and over again. He says, that's why your feet are the thing that touch the ground. They're the earthiest part of your body because they're the most connected to the ground. And that is the thing, sort of like the most, the thing that is most associated with the natural tendency, the natural order, because your feet touch the ground, and that's why it's associated with habituation. Just things, we just do this because that's the normal way of doing things. And we do it day in and day out, and it causes us to forget that inspiration. That's what hergel means, is that you sort of lose that inspiration of, wow, this is new and exciting, okay? He says, and that's why when the angel injures Yaakov, he injures him in his thigh, which is part of the leg. The word gid which is the sciatic nerve, is also associated with this idea of just forgetting the inspiration. Because the word hanashe in Hebrew means to forget. It doesn't just mean the sciatic nerve, it means the part of your body which is noshe, which means to forget. Remember, why was, why was menashe called menashe? Because Yosef says, God caused me to forget my travails. So the word lenashot means to forget. Okay? So, he says, umezuzah biyamin kemo shekatuv netzach Yisrael lo yishaker. He says, and why is the mezuzah on the right side? 
because the mezuzah represents the constancy and the persistency because it is a constant mitzvah. Once you put up the mezuzah on the door, it's there forever. So you, you're surrounding yourself by two sort of opposing forces. The mezuzah represents the continuity and the, the consistency of service, of doing everything day in and day out the, the, very much the same way. But the negative side of that is that through that habituation, you become bored, it becomes tired, it becomes old. So you have to put the menorah on the left side, which reminds you of the excitement and the inspiration of something new. So netzach is a fantastic quality to have of being persistent, of doing everything consistently and doing everything without faltering even for a moment. But the negative aspect of netzach is that if I am constant and persistent and consistent in everything that I do, how do I stop myself from getting bored and becoming uninspired? Because everything is nitzchi, everything is the same way it was yesterday. And therefore you need the menorah on the left side to remind you that even though it's the same thing, but it's new and exciting all over again. Mezuzah, menorah. Okay, those are the two opposites. Aval hasmol, olu nikan rak bimechanukah, nitkan gam hasmol. Okay, and therefore, the ita remez, tevoach, tevach, vehachen, otiot, chanukah. That he says, if you, if you'll, you'll, you'll notice, that when we talk in a couple of weeks, we're going to read Parshat Miketz. And there's a story over there where the brothers come to visit Yosef. They don't know it's Yosef, but Yosef gives instructions to his butcher and says, prepare a meal of meat for these gentlemen. And he says, and what you notice is that the words Tavoach, Tevach, Vehachen spell out the word Chanukah, if you jumble the letters. Because the word Vehachen has the word Chanukah, except the letter chet, and it's from the word tavoach tevach, the last letter of tevach is chet, you put that with the word vehachein and you get the name, the word Chanukah. What does that show you? He says that what Yosef was trying to teach them was, the Gemara says that Yosef said, prepare the meat in their presence by removing the sciatic nerve. That's what he was telling his, his butcher. Vehakol inyan echad ki inyan hachana hu hazrizut. He says, because what Yosef was trying to communicate was that I need to remove that weak spot that you as Jews have. You have the weak spot that you're not consistent. And on the flip side, when you are consistent, you get bored. And so that's the sciatic nerve of the Jewish people. That's the weak point of the Jewish people. It is the hergel. It, it is the habituation that causes us to lose interest and to lose excitement. And it is the lack of consistency because we drop out of that excitement. And so we need to constantly reinvigorate ourselves, reinvent ourselves in order to constantly get excited and in the process of that remain consistent. This has to be the single most, the single greatest challenge, I would say, in our religious devotion. Because in Judaism, we don't believe that when you're uninspired, you should not daven. In Judaism, we believe that whether you're wake, woke up inspired today or not, you still got a daven shacharis, and you still have to do your mitzvahs, and you still have to drive carpool to the kid's school, which you're paying a fortune on, of tuition for in the first place. And you've got to do it day in and day out, and whether you resent it or whether you're happy about it, it's right like that famous medrash. What's the most important pasuk in the whole Torah? Es hakeves echad ta'asev aboker ve'et hakeves hasheni ta'asev in ha'arbayim. The medrash says, according to one opinion, that the most important pasuk in the Torah is, bring the sheep as an offering in the morning, and bring another sheep in the offering in the afternoon. That's the daily tamid sacrifice, day in and day out. It never changes. But why is that such a challenge? Because since I'm called upon to be consistent in the way that I devote my life to God, I don't always feel the inspiration. And not only that, but my challenge is, despite the consistent way that I live my life, I have to figure out how I'm going to be inspired every day by something new. And that's really tough. That's really, really tough. So Judaism requires netzach, 
requires cons the consistency, the eternality, in order to be persistent and be able to endure this long marathon of life. But it also requires us to have a menorah in our lives to constantly light that light to illuminate the darkness of the doldrums of life and make sure that we're continuously inspired. There are ways to do that. There are, there are techniques. Prayer becomes boring, so you study what the prayers are about. Torah study becomes boring, so you learn a different study. You figure out something new that you can take on or something new and exciting that you can do while remaining consistent in the process. But that's the juggling act of being a faithful Jew. And that's what's represented in this wrestling match that Yaakov has with Ace of Angel. Okay?